FanDuel DraftKings FanDuel DraftKings FanDuel DraftKings FanDuel DraftKings FanDuel DraftKings Since August 1st, the two daily fantasy sites have combined to spend more than $100 million to air their commercials almost 30,000 times. I remember the advent of big-time fantasy football play, and I knew more than a fair share of people who ran a lot of fly-by-night ventures and skimmed gobs of cash from the top that were supposed to be winnings. Then along came legit fantasy play, big corporations, even the TV networks and the NFL put their skin in the game to cash in. Sooner or later, someone was going to get nailed for insider trading with so much money available, and that means the majority of fans hoping to win big are being tabbed as suckers like so many who came before them. Here comes the new sports scandal. Welcome to the hard line. Lawyer with the firm Becker and Polyakov in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, specializing in sports and gambling, Daniel Wallach. Well, Dan, you heard me say it, and I think we've been thinking about this a long time. This is a completely unregulated industry, and now they just basically prove that they got a lot of suckers out there getting taken, right? Well, I wouldn't, I don't know if I'd go that far. It's been completely unregulated from day one, but we're now seeing the dangers inherent in an unregulated, uh, you know, framework. We didn't know the extent to which insiders were, 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 were playing on, 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 uh, on other sites. Uh, we're learning all these disturbing things over the last couple of days. And I think, uh, I believe the industry is going to recover, uh, but reforms need to be instituted immediately, and uh, this is definitely going to be a pathway towards regulation. Uh, this can't exist anymore with these uh, nascent uh, new technology companies operating without any oversight or regulation whatsoever. It's a recipe for disaster, uh, but fortunately for the industry, uh, you know, a, a solution a solution is is coming. I mean, this is too big to fail. But without regulation and without, without controls and safeguards, it could fail. Well, let, let me just get to that point, that too big to fail, because here we have FanDuel and DraftKings, in case people aren't up on it, and you have basically employees placing bets, using information that is not generally available to the public here. A lot of money trading hands. One guy wins $350,000 at one of the rival sites here. And you talked about it, too big to fail. You've got the networks involved, the sports leagues are involved, Major League Baseball's involved. They're all involved. There's no way they'll let this fail simply because people are going to make too much money. Isn't that right, Dan? This is too lucrative for people to let it go, just like insider trading um, and Wall Street. <laughs> I mean, you have, you, you, I mean, at, at bottom, you have a demand. You have a demand uh, from 56 million consumers that want this product, that play this product. Uh, but you could be... Um, you could be uh, diluting the demand uh, if, if the public doesn't believe that the games are on the level and that there's not a level playing field. Well, let me stop you there, there when you talk about level playing field. Let me stop you there then, level playing field. What does this then tell us about these sites, like the ones involved here, about being legitimate? What should the fans now think? Uh, they are legitimate. We've had thousands of, um, tens of thousands of these contests take place over a couple of years. In but above and board and as well? Work. Integrity as well uh, comes into this, I right? I think above board, but lacking, uh, lacking real safeguards. And, and there were a lot of questions that weren't answered by DraftKings and FanDuel. Uh, the player who won, uh, the, the, the DraftKings employee who won $350,000 on FanDuel, he may not be the only player who's winning big exactly. on FanDuel. I mean, one of, the, one of the executives of DraftKings openly admitted in a, in a conference last week that many of his employees make more money playing at FanDuel than they earn uh, working for DraftKings. And those words are going to come back to haunt them because I think the, the public and Congress and, and the Massachusetts Attorney General is certainly want to get to the bottom of how prolific or how pervasive is this cross-site playing by industry employees. I've only I mean, got about... It, 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 yeah. I got about 30 seconds left, but you said an interesting word in there. You said Congress. Are we, in your opinion, then, looking at the government getting involved? Not only the government, but certainly the leagues are going to get involved now because their integrity is at stake. But do you think we'll see congressional investigations here? Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see, we'll see uh, congressional hearings. And this will ultimately be regulated by, by the federal government. I mean, there's no question about it. Uh, the Adam Silver can't, uh, on the one hand, maintain that sports betting needs to be regulated by the feds and then, and then say, no, uh, we need to treat daily fantasy sports differently. I think as we're now finding out, daily fantasy sports and sports betting have many parallels. There are integrity of the game issues, consumer protection yep. issues, uh, transparency issues. This is all going to be legal. This is all going to be regulated, and it's all going to be taxed. And the, and, and the years of this hypocrisy are over. We're talking money, too. $2.6 in entry fees this year alone. Daniel Wallach, fascinating. Thanks for joining us. We'll do it again real soon. Stay here. The fastest 60 minutes of news continues.